Welcome back! I am OG, the original Gramester, and today we are playing Juno New Origins again. As you can see, since last time I've put in a few hours. Last time I didn't even have half an hour in my first gaming experience. Almost first. Watch the video to see why. This time I have just over 10 hours, so I have been working on it a bit. and. I've learned quite a lot since last time, but I still have a lot to learn. Today we're going to be looking at programming or coding the rocket to do what you want it to do automatically. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to code the basics of a rocket or more precisely the, the fault finding <laughs> when you have errors in your code, <laughs> what you can do. Um, to try and diagnose them and I know this kind of sounds like a tutorial it's it's really not you'll see what I mean basically every time you fix an error a new one crops up so today we're going to take a program that looks like this which is a basic program which I got working to get a rocket to orbit it doesn't do much. All it really does is turns the rocket or pitches it as it ascends. And we're going to go we're going to go from there to something that looks like this. And that being the final program in today's video. And I'm just going to show you the steps along the way to get from the first one to the second one and what all those steps do. Sorry, I neglect to mention the other thing I want to do with this program is to get it to eject the solid rocket boosters as it ascends. I've managed to get most of the pitching program working even though it's in a rather rudimentary fashion. I want to add booster ejection to that. Here is the fine rocket which we are loading our program into today. It's the first decent sized rocket I've cobbled together. As you can see I have four SRBs around the base. It has three stages excluding the SRBs, large habitation module on top, don't ask me why, and it should take off by itself. Speed up the footage to the boring parts until we get to close to the time when the SRB should separate. Sorry about that. Okay, I can hear the SRB throttling down now. Turn off the RCS to save a little monopropellant. That's me being optimistic, thinking I'll need that monopropellant later during orbit. Now we look at the SRBs and we see how much fuel they have left. It'll be 6%, 5%, 4%. And what I want is for the SRBs to jettison when it gets to zero. But they went early. That's no good. What I need to do is to eject the boosters later. So I'm going to change the amount of fuel at which the boosters eject. I'm going to reduce it so that the boosters will eject later. And then we'll see if that works. No, it does not. So I still need to eject the boosters even later. Just a little bit though. The problem with this game is that I can't seem to measure only the fuel remaining in the boosters. I have to measure the fuel overall for the stage and that includes the main engine. So I have to take into account that the main engine still has fuel in it. So what I'm doing now is reducing from 26.5% to 26.3% overall fuel remaining and ejecting the boosters when it reaches that figure. Here we go again. Launch the rocket, speed up the footage, 
and then slow down and see if the boosters will jettison when their fuel reaches 0%. 3, 2, 1, and then Come on, eject. Eject. No. And now it's too late because the active stages have more fuel than what is required to eject the booster. Well, I've tried 26.5% and 26.3%. Let's split the difference and try 26.4%. The way this works is that the fuel is measured for the boosters plus the main engines. Once the boosts stop firing, they are taken out of the fuel measurement equation and then the figures jump. So if you don't jettison the boosters just before those figures jump, it's too late. Then you lose the opportunity. Let's see if this one will work. 3%. Two percent, one percent, zero boosters empty. Nothing happened. And if you look in the top right, you'll see forty-two percent remaining. So we have missed the opportunity. There is another problem here. That is that not all launch sites are the same. So yeah, I've set it back to 26.5%, but when I run this, the boosters, which did detach previously at 26.5%, no longer detach. And that's because I started at a launch pad that is at a higher altitude, so the main engine burnt less, so it had more fuel, and when the boosters should have detached, they didn't. Now I'm going to try something else. I'm going to take the fuel out of the equation entirely. If you look at the if statement, I've removed the fuel and I'm going to add in time. Time since launch. With a solid rocket booster, once it starts burning, it can't stop and it burns at a predictable rate. So if you know how much fuel it has, you know when it's going to stop burning. So I looked up how much fuel these have got. And according to the size of the booster aspect and the engines, it's 108 seconds worth. So instead of using fuel, I'm setting the time to 108 seconds. They should jettison at 108 seconds. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Will we see the boosters separate at 108 seconds or not? Everything looking good. Engines are starting to throttle down on the boosters. So not too long now. 15% fuel, 14% fuel. Th oh, that's not supposed to happen. And that beeping is telling you that it's staging. And as you can see, all the stages are falling apart. So this is not what we would call a success. Not at all. So there were two problems there. One was that the rocket staged early. The second was that it kept on staging. It kept on staging because the if statement was embedded in the while statement. But I'll fix that later. What I want to do now is get the timing right. So I'm setting it to 120 seconds instead of 108. And I'm going to see how that goes. Just fixing one problem at a time. Well, as you can see, I made it past 13% without jettisoning my boosters this time. So that's good. Maybe I got it right. Or not. So as of right now, things aren't working, but I think I know where they're going wrong, and I'm confident that I can fix them. So for that reason, I'm going to take the next step and make things more complex, 
trusting that I can get this timing right in the process. So here we go, I'm adding fuel staging into the mix as well. So I'm going to stage on time since launch for the boosters and I'm going to have a thing that will stage subsequent stages if the fuel reaches zero. So what I did next was to run the new script without changing any of the variables. Theoretically then it should have run like the previous 120 second script. In other words it should have triggered the boosters early. But unfortunately it didn't. So there's something else wrong with that script too. The thing wrong with the script is that firstly I have this repeat block set to 1 which really does nothing and secondly that I have the time since launch 120 seconds in an if block so that if is tested and if it is found false then the program just moves on. If you embed the if in a while block like the fuel stage is then it will keep testing it as long as the while statement is true but if you just leave it outside the while block it only tests it once. So it only checked once is time since launch greater than 120 seconds. It wasn't and it moved on. So that's the problem there. Okay, it's time to change things up. So as you can see, I have changed the program considerably. The first thing you might notice just below the activate stages is I've introduced the variable i, which I initially set to zero. Then I've moved the if block into the while block. And I've made an else if block below that. Basically an else if block is just an if block. So if the if block says false on a statement, then the else if block says, okay, you said false, but maybe I'll say true. So it's basically two if blocks in a row. And those are embedded within the while block. The else if block uses the variable i. And I'm using that to try to stop it repeating. In other words, try to stop it staging over and over again. I initially set that variable to zero, then my else if block tests if that variable is zero, and if it is, then it activates the stage and it sets the variable to one, so that if the while statement makes it run again, it'll look, and next time it sees the i value is one, it will not execute. That's the theory. Hopefully, this thing will see, okay, either I've been going for 120 seconds, in which case I stage, that would be the boosters, or fuel has reached zero, and that would be one of the subsequent stages, in which case I also stage. So let's see how that works. Obviously that did not work. While the initial staging after 120 seconds did seem to happen correctly, the I variable didn't seem to have an effect and the rocket just kept on staging. Here's what I'll try next. First I get rid of the else if and I just change it to a normal if. And then I try a cheap and nasty fix of adding a wait 5 seconds in at the end of each if block. That's just allowing the program a little bit of time in which to read the variables in case there's an error creeping in because it doesn't have time to read variables, which does happen. go again. Will it stage? Yes, it staged the boosters. And it hasn't just kept on staging. Or has it? Yeah, it's still staging. It's just that there's now a five second delay between each time it stages. So the problem is still there, we've only delayed it. Time for another new solution. I'm going to take this if statement, the time since launch one, and I'm going to do away with it entirely. I'm going to take it out of the while block, and I'm going to put it into a separate thread of the program, one that runs concurrently with the main thread. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have something that when the program starts, it immediately starts counting as the rocket launches. When it reaches 150 seconds, it's going to broadcast a message. 
another part of the program is going to catch that message. When it receives it, it's going to stage the rocket. And then we'll see how that works. Or not. Okay, as you can see I have made it to almost space and the boosters have not staged yet, however I'm not worried about that. It's purely a timing issue, obviously 200 seconds is too much. There they go now, so all I need to do is make that booster staging a little sooner. I'm just going to let it run on now for a few seconds. To make sure that when it hits 95,000 meters it switches to manual mode in other words it stops changing pitch as specified by my program 95 there we go manual mode restored okay so that works I just have to make it a shorter time now I've added in some code to set the craft pitch to 90 so that once I've reached the altitude of 95,000 meters the craft will level out and then I can work on circularizing the orbit manually and I've changed the time from 200 seconds to 150 seconds finally I should be all set for a good launch I'm expecting staging at 150 seconds and then I expect my rocket to level out when it gets to 95,000 meters. Holding thumbs that this should... Damn it. Okay. I think I know what went wrong. Look at the code. And we are missing a zero. For the want of one little zero. And now, it should work properly. Small setback, one little character that's wrong. This time it's going to work. Maybe. Hold thumbs. Here we go again. moment we've been waiting for we are ready let's see what happens when the booster fuel gets to zero percent two percent one percent zero percent and boosters depleted <laughs> it's perfect it's absolutely perfect that is just what I wanted. I am so happy. At last. Finally. Got it right. And now we cruise on up to orbit. Here we are now passing 90,000 meters. And I'm just going to check that everything is running fine and that the craft hands over control back to me at 95,000 meters steering in a nice level direction. That's 95,000. Manual mode restored and the craft is pitching upwards. Uh, it's going vertical. <laughs> yep, that just happened. So what went wrong now? Well, let me explain. I'm an old navy man and I still tend to think in nautical terms. When you are steering a ship, you give the course directions in three digit degrees. So if I want to steer east, I will order a course of 090. 
The same applies to navigation. If you look on your charts, you'll see things like this, which are called compass roses, and those give the directions of your courses. If we zoom in on one, you'll see that east is, okay, on this chart it just says 90, but it is 090. That's the kind of terminology I'm used to. So all I was thinking about was having a rocket going east in a level plane. You would think I would know better, being that I was a submariner, so I'm used to working in three dimensions, but apparently I do not know better. Anyway, that was the mistake. Relatively easy to sort out. All I do is I turn the pitch to zero instead of 90. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat informative and at least slightly entertaining. I know it didn't have the most exciting footage in it, <laughs> at least not most of the time, but it showed a realistic version of how I deal with the problems that arise in building rockets. And this example was coding, but it's not necessarily coding. You get many similar problems, especially with the design of the rockets themselves. And this is the sort of iterative approach I take to solving those sort of problems. Obviously, my coding skills are rather terrible, so please don't use this as an example of how to code or how a program should look. There are other far more competent Juno coders out there, and I suggest you follow their tutorials, as I myself will now start doing. For various reasons, this video took a lot longer to edit than I wanted it to. I would have liked to have got it out almost a week ago, but life happens. I am very pleased to announce that tomorrow my new microphone should be arriving, so no more will I have to do delayed voiceovers, which take a very long time, and no longer will my audio quality sound quite so terrible. I do apologize for the way it has sounded up until now. Things should get much better very shortly. Going forward in this series, I would love to start setting myself new challenges. I really want to build big rockets. That's what I do best in Kerbals. I build ridiculously large rockets. And, and have accidents with them, because let's be honest, that's where the fun lies. Uh, I also want to try and explore other planets and moons. I have made it to the moon now in Juno, well, the closest of the moons. I crash-landed a rather large rocket there already. Right or wrong, the game actually gave me an achievement for that. Go figure. I really enjoy pushing the limits of games like this to see what the physics engines can do, see what I can build that they don't want me to build, and to just try generally ridiculous things. So expect more of that on my channel. That's the kind of thing I'm going to be doing, along with other games, of course. I've already done a 7 Days to Die video, and I will definitely be doing more of those, and probably a couple of other games too. I also have some plans to do completely ungaming related things. We'll see how that goes. Um, we'll see what time allows for. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. This is the OG. See you next time.